So we're going to go over two new features, one that's actually getting released in a couple of weeks as part of our Q1 release, and then another feature um, that actually got released a couple months ago as part of one of our releases in 2023. But um, we wanted to showcase it because uh, it is something that's a little bit different, and uh, we're finding that a lot of areas are really uh, liking it and really interested in it, especially in the EMEA side. So I wanted to uh, take a minute and talk about that. But first, let me quickly just go over real quick kind of the value of third-party patching through Patch for Intune. Um, I really love this slide because I think it really speaks uh, volumes as to what the advantages on using Patch for Intune. Uh, you can see that if you are using Microsoft Intune alone, you have to do all of these items yourself that cost time, resources, um, you know, if there's obviously, you know, an element of human error there, but um, by having Patch for Intune as part of your third party patching solution, uh, you will take care of most of that for you. So down at the end is when you uh, both have to deploy stuff from Microsoft Intune itself. But we are really providing a huge amount of uh, resource and time savings and really augmenting, you know, your already existing use of Microsoft um, Intune if that's what you are currently on. Um, and then these are some of the areas that we highlight when it comes to why Microsoft Intune or why Patch for Intune can help you. Um, you know, we've got all the different content items that we've talked about. Um, we've got, you know, kind of the set it and forget it mindset. Uh, but wanted to make sure that, you know, you guys can see that uh, just because, you know, you're you're using, you have Microsoft Intune, you know, maybe you don't think you need a third-party application, but if anybody's doing third-party um, application publishing through Microsoft Intune alone, they know that all of these things is something that they could really, really use help on. All right, so let me jump right into it. So the first thing we're going to talk about are scopes. So Microsoft Intune has a scoping feature, and uh, this is really uh, in use for large organizations that need to operate in silos. So on the US side, a great example of that are state and local governments. So for example, I'm in Minnesota, and so one of the things that we do here is we operate very much in silos, sure, under the state government, but we have the Department of Transportation, the Department of Education. You know, you have all these different silos that are specific and really don't overlap in terms of an IT structure. They have their own independent areas. And so uh, what we were being asked for is, well, we all share one Microsoft Intune. We don't want to get multiple Microsoft Intune accounts. So can we each have our own uh, patch for Intune neurons tenant and share the Microsoft Intune? So we took a look at this and we did it. We were able to figure this out. So again, this is, this is going to be really great for those organizations who have to stay siloed, but all still share that Microsoft um, Intune tenant. So I'm gonna switch screens over here and I have um, a recorded demo that I am going to walk through with you guys. All right. OK, so what you can see here right now is that we're going to be playing with uh, two scopes that are already in the Microsoft Intune Admin Center. So we've got the new Brighton scope and the Salt Lake City scope. And uh, they're already built in. They're already being used within the Microsoft Intune um, environment and so the whole point is to be able to see that new brighton can see something and salt lake city cannot and vice versa so one of the things that we did is when you are starting the onboarding process within the uh, neurons environment it's going to look to see if you have already gotten a uh, scope set up in your environment so you're going to see here that this is our onboarding um, path that we already have so if you've gone through this you're familiar with it but once you get to step six which we'll get to here in just a second um, it's going to know that you already have scopes in place. And so it's going to list out your scopes in the drop down menu, and you're going to be able to decide which scope um, that you are going to be part of as part of your onboarding process. So for this scenario, we're going to pick New Brighton. We're going to finish the onboarding um, wizard. 
And then we're going to go over to the settings page and what that's going to show you is where you can um, confirm what your scope is. So you can see right there, it's your current scope. Um, you can change it. It's going to be a rare situation, um, but you are able to change it if you have the right uh, if you have the right permissions. If you do, we are going to prompt you to reset your environment because the applications that you are managing for one scope might not necessarily be the same applications you're going to manage for the new scope. Um, so we would reset your tenant um, per our recommendation, but we're not going to do that in this scenario, but we wanted to let you know that that can happen if you're going to do that. Um, so now we're going to go and um, manage an application. So what we're going to do is we're going to find an un unmanaged application and we are going to manage it specifically to just one of the scopes. So we're going to go down and pick the real VNC server. So keep that in your mind. Um, and we're going to go ahead and, you know, set some preferences here as to how we're going to do it. We're going to select our group so we know which group that it needs to uh, go out to. And remember, we're in the new Brighton scope, right? So this is where it's going to be publishing to. So we're going to go pop back over to the Microsoft Intune tenant and or Microsoft Intune um, Center, and we're going to refresh just to make sure it's in there. And give Microsoft Intune a second. And you can see up at the top right hand side that we're in the new Brighton one. So that way you guys, you know, are sure that it's in there. So you'll see it's going to appear here at the top of the column here once it's refreshed. See, there's the real VNC server. And once we click in this and we go inside, you'll be able to see that down in or in the properties. And if you scroll down, you'll see that the scope tag is labeled there with new Brighton. Um, and then just for another quick check, we're going to swap over and go to Salt Lake City. So you can see at the top, we're in Salt Lake City now, and we're going to go to Applications, and you can see we can't see that application. So even though they're still sharing this uh, Neurons tenant, they cannot see the two different applications within it. So it's still very siloed, and you don't have to worry about, um, you know, whether or not that is something that they have uh, overlapped there. All right, and so let me do the last one. The last one I'm really excited about, and this one is coming out again at the uh, in a couple weeks, so January 23rd, which are which is our release date. Custom application publishing. So, one of the things we've heard from our customers is that uh, you know there are applications out there that they that we can't have in our catalog. Um, so one of the the one you're going to see in our demo, for example, is Cisco AnyConnect. Um, that is specific to each company, uh, you know, uh, for for that application. So that's not something we could ever have in our catalog, for instance. So what we have done um, for coming out, like I said, in January on January 23rd, is we are going to release the ability to custom publish through um, Patch for Intune. Um, one of the questions I've gotten a lot about this feature um, from current customers is, well, I can already do this in Microsoft Intune. Why, why would you add this feature within Patch for Intune? The reason is, is because people want a single pane of glass. Nobody wants to do the same thing in two different places. So the fact that you can now do everything within Patch for Intune and kind of use and use the same groups and everything like that and the same preferences that you are used to using as part of third party publishing through uh, Patch for Intune, you'll be able to do this now with custom application publishing. Um, so let me go into that and swap this out. Okay, so again, this is going to be a recorded demo I'm going to talk over with you guys. All right, so the first thing you'll notice is that we have a new button, uh, Create Custom App. And so obviously that's where you're going to start. Um, and this is where you're going to start filling in the application information. So we obviously have the basic information that you're going to need to fill out. Um, like I said, we're going to use the Cisco AnyConnect for um, this demo. Um, important, obviously, to have the version number in there because we want to make sure that that, you know, separates future. And then this is where you're going to start um, getting into the meat of things. So you're going to upload the installer file 
And while that's installing um, and uploading, um, one of the things you can do is you can actually customize uh, your installer name if you want to shorten it. Um, and then we do allow you to pick which architecture you want. Um, this is uh, harkening back to another feature we had last year about limiting uh, the architecture that you can see, but that is an option that you can pick from. And now we're going to do uh, the requirements. So we're going to add our detection. And there are going to be several different options in this drop down that you can use. Uh, we're going to pick the registry key for this one. And so you're going to fill in the information um, that's required. Obviously, uh, we try to keep this as simple as possible. So we only put required fields in there that absolutely were must haves. Um, we do still allow you to do that 32 bit context um, just in case that's something you do need. We're going to use it in this scenario. Um, just to be thorough, but we're going to go ahead and add that. And then you can continue to add if you want, but we're going to leave it at registry key for um, this example. But if you did want to add more, you can. All right, so then the next one we're going to go to is uh, post install. So this is going to be stuff that Microsoft Intune is checking before they install, um, as well as after the installation. So again, what Microsoft Intune is going to do it. So we're going to do it through the file detection process. So again, mandatory fields, try to keep this at a minimum. You're going to fill it out with the appropriate information that you need. Uh, depending on you know, what you pick for the property, additional fields will drop down. We're going to continue to fill that out. And you'll see that help bubble comes up too when you hover over the 32-bit path. All right, and then you can get to uh, the command line. So we'll have the in install command, the uninstall command. Um, the install time is customizable. We left it a default of 60 minutes, but if you guys want to update that, that's completely up to you. Um, and then the, uh, we offer the uninstall option on the company portal if that's something you want to offer as well. And then um, in the restart behavior, we gave you guys four different options just depending on how you want it to work. Uh, so these are options that you can use uh, just depending on what it is that you feel like this custom application needs to have happen with it. Um, so we're going to go ahead and finish this part up, add the installer. <laughs> um, they did it for the X64. If you need to do it for additional architecture, you can. We're going to leave it at the X64 in this example. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and publish it. So we're going to go into any connects. We are going to go ahead and manage it. We're going to put in um, our custom icon, which is another feature we uh, added last year based on some user feedback. And so what we're going to end up doing now is putting, picking some groups, publishing it. And while that is publishing, we're going to show you real quick that you can um, clone this as well. So say you have another version that comes out, um, instead of starting from scratch, we give you the option to uh, actually clone it, and then you can just update it. So you can update it to the next version, hit edit, the, do the new installer file, and then um, you actually have very few things you need to change if you're going to clone it because it, most everything is already in there. Uh, you do need to change the value as we're doing here in the demo. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you're pretty much done at that point because everything else is already in there. You've already have all the uh, information in there. So uh, now you have the latest version and the older version. So we're going to hit refresh, uh, make sure that uh, that four version got published, so it did. So we're gonna go check the Microsoft Intune tenant just to make sure it's there. And there it is, lo and behold. So it is now in uh, Microsoft Intune's hands to go ahead and publish to your environment from Microsoft Intune. Um, and then one quick thing, um, we do give you two options to delete. There's a delete from Intune. Um, where you can delete it from here from Intune, or you can also delete it from a uh, patch for Intune within neurons. So there are going to be two different delete options. So uh, that will pretty much wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah.